Hello bookworms! Today I'm here to do a review on Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the movie. Not the screenplay version because I have not yet read that, but I am planning on reading it in December. Although I did actually read a couple of lines because we saw Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them with a very enthusiastic theater full of people and we missed a couple of lines because people were cheering or clapping or booing. So, um, actually I don't think there was any booing. Well, there was one part, but whatever. So I just like went back because I was like, oh my God, what did this one character say at this point? Because we had missed it and now I know. Okay, so this video, in the beginning, I'm gonna just say some general thoughts and feelings on Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Obviously I loved it. And then I'm gonna go into some spoilery, like questions that I have after seeing the film. So overall, like I said, I absolutely loved it. I think Newt was a phenomenal main character. He was so like quirky and fun and interesting. Um, and I really liked that he wasn't like this like overtly kind of brave guy. He just kind of was like, he was exactly how I picture like English people to be, where he's like very polite and like he gets into New York and he gets in trouble right away from Tina who's trying to bring him to Makuza because he brought all these magical beasts into New York. Um, and he's just like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go with you. Like he's kind of like, oh, this is annoying. Like I need to be doing other things, but he's like, okay, and just like follows along. And I just thought he was so like lovable. I just really like enjoyed him so so much um he was he was probably like the second best character in the film for me the first best character being jacob who is the only muggle in the film that has a very like prominent role jacob was hilarious he was like the perfect comic relief that was needed in certain situations. Just everything that he did was so funny and I especially just loved all of his banter with Queenie. Like the two of them together were so amazing and I just love them so much. So I really loved Queenie like a lot more than I was expecting to because she initially like looks like one of these characters that is going to be very feminine and a little bit like with her voice and stuff it might give you the impression that she might be a little bit ditzy or whatever but she knows everything that's going on. She's able to read minds and she is not someone that just takes what is given to her. She will go out and change the situation if need be and I was just really surprised surprised by her character and how much I really really liked her. Tina for me fell a little bit flat. I didn't, there wasn't anything about her that I thought was very exceptional. I never really took like a strong liking to her, um, but she wasn't like horrible, but I just didn't feel the same way about her that I felt about the other characters. Oh, I thought it was really cool that Madame Pickery was the president of Makuza um, because to have a black woman as president in the 1920s in America was just really, really, really cool. Although I would like to have seen a lot more of her because she didn't really have like too strong of a role. Um, and I know that the next film is going to be going over to Paris and um, taking place mostly in Paris and the UK. So I really just want to see more of her. I don't want that to be all that we got from her. So just overall, like I thought that it was a really good story, although I did think that it was a little bit misleading because the movie is called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And while there are fantastic beasts in the film, that really wasn't like the focus. There was so much more that was going on and it was so much more about some other things that was almost like a secondary like diversion type story that was just distracting us from the real story while we got to know these characters. I also am really upset that David Yates said that um, the characters that we got to know in this film won't necessarily be the heart of the final four films in the franchise um, because I, I really love them and I really just want to see more Newt. But anyway, those are my non-spoilery thoughts. I loved this movie so much as I'm sure that all other Potter fans did. Um, and I'm so pleased that there's gonna be more of them and that there is so much more story to explore. But now I'm going to get into some of these spoilery questions that I found myself asking once I finished watching the film. So the first thing that I was asking myself was as soon as I left the theater, at the end of the film, Newt leaves Tina and he gets on a boat to go back to England. And I'm like, huh how far can a wizard apparate? Because there was so much apparating in this movie and then he gets on a boat at the end and I was like, this is confusing. And I get that it is like good for being dramatic because it's like this cute like ending scene between these two characters that we know end up getting married. But 
Also, I was like, why didn't he just apparate wherever he needed to go? So I looked it up online afterward and they said that there is like a certain radius for how far you can apparate. So maybe he was taking a boat to the place where he would be able to apparate from. But then I also don't understand why he wouldn't just apparate to that midpoint and then apparate from the midpoint to his final destination. So that was a little bit confusing to me. The next questions that I had were also pertaining to Newt and his character, because as we know, Newt got expelled from Hogwarts. But if Newt got expelled, I was very curious why he was able to keep his wand, because we know that Hagrid wasn't allowed to. And then also, how did he learn to apparate and how did he learn to do such advanced magic when he wasn't um, allowed to finish his education at Hogwarts? Wasn't he too young to have learned what he knew? And wasn't he like, like, wouldn't he get in trouble for using magic as an underage wizard outside of school? Or did he only start doing advanced magic once he was of age? And then can they not can you not get like persecuted for using magic if you're above age, even if you haven't had a full formal education? So that was confusing to me. Um, and afterward, me and my friends were discussing it and we were wondering if maybe he is one of the earliest students to get expelled from Hogwarts and that's, he kind of set like a precedent for future students. Um, and maybe that's what the case was, but it was still just confusing because obviously we're going off of what we know from Harry Potter here. Another question at the end of the film was whether um, Queenie was going into Jacob's Bakery to give him his memories back. I mean, we, we know that he had some kind of like subconscious memory of everything because all of his baked goods were designed after the beasts that we saw in the film. But I just want to know like, then did he remember Queenie? Did he not remember Queenie? Are they gonna like start over with this whole like relationship thing that they kind of formed again? Um, is she gonna tell him that she's a witch even though she's really not allowed to because that is against the rules of Makuza in the United States? They were so cute together and I'm so, I feel so invested in what's gonna happen between them because he was such an amazing human and she was so like such a great witch. So like to see the two of them together just made me so happy and I really just want them to be together and I don't want these stupid magical laws to get in the way. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to like just start talking again and then move to the UK together so that they can be happy because you're allowed to get married to muggles in the UK. I'm not gonna say no match because I hate that word. I still think it's so dumb and they should have just continued to call people muggles that were non-magical. Another question that I had, so the government in the United States is obviously very different than the government that we saw in, like as the Ministry of Magic in the UK. And as we know, in the current world, in America, we use different currency than they use in England. So I was also curious whether they stick with like galleons and stuff in the American wizarding world, or if they have their own form of currency as well. That's like kind of pretty irrelevant, but it's just like a little detail that I was curious about. Now for like the giant reveal part at the end. So as you know, that because I'm assuming that you saw the film, if you're watching this far into the video, at the end of the film, um, Graves turns into Grindelwald and I actually was really surprised like so I didn't hear that he was gonna be in the film I knew obviously beforehand that Johnny Depp had been cast as Grindelwald and I heard I saw different news articles that said to be aware of cameos but it didn't say the specific cameo so throughout the whole film I was just like maybe I missed it and then at the end when he gets when Newt reveals him and then he ends up being Johnny Depp my first reaction, it was really funny because first, some of the theater started booing, some of the theater started cheering, there were lots of gasps, and I was like, who is that? So I didn't even recognize Johnny Depp at first. And then after like a minute, it hit me and I was like, oh, duh, like that's what it is. Well, I have mixed feelings on him being Grindelwald. I really don't like that casting at all. Um, I thought it was cool that he showed up there, but my question is, so he was like pretending to be Graves, but how was he doing that? Was he using Polyjuice Potion? And if he was using Polyjuice Potion, doesn't that mean that Graves was alive somewhere but in the beginning they had all of those newspaper articles about how Grindelwald is has been seen in Europe and like he's you know wreaking havoc and stuff all over so obviously I'm guessing that Graves like traveled to Europe at some point and they crossed paths and that's how um, Grindelwald ended up like taking over his identity but I'm just curious how he was doing it and if Graves is potentially still alive somewhere um, because I would like to see Colin Farrell further in 
the upcoming movies because I thought that he did a really good job as Percival, even though he was Grindelwald as Percival. I'm just, I'm really, really curious about that because I don't, I don't think I know of any other way that you can become another person without using Polyjuice Potion. And then my last question that I had is one that I feel like has kind of been answered a little bit or will be once I read that new Pottermore story. So we know that Newt says that he has encountered another Obscurus in his past and he was able to separate the Obscurus from the wizard. The question is, is that Obscurus Ariana Dumbledore? Because we know that that forms from somebody that is trying to suppress their magic and we know that that's what Ariana Dumbledore did. And then in that scene where Newt is in the Makuza Hall and there's all of those like wizards and stuff, they say that they've heard of him, they know that Dumbledore like highly values him and vouches for him and stuff. So if Dumbledore has taken this like liking to Newt, is it because Newt helped Ariana separate herself from that Obscurus and that Obscurus, is that her Obscurus that was hiding like inside of his suitcase? So that was like a question that I initially had and then literally yesterday, I read an article saying that Pottermore was going to be releasing um, a new story on Ariana Dumbledore. So I feel like that question has kind of been answered. I have not yet read the Pottermore story about her, but I'm going to and I'm going to assume that that is the case there. And I forgot to say it in the beginning of the video, but I am obsessed with Nifflers and I would do anything to have my own. He's so cute, like the, just the most adorable little creature. And seriously, every single time that I envision him like in that window, like with the jewelry on him like that, like pretending to be normal, I just start hysterical laughing. Like he, it's just such an endearing creature to me. I just, I just love it. So my friends and I actually had also been curious why um, Newt didn't Akio her, the Niffler earlier. Um, we were trying to come up with different reasons like why he maybe didn't do that because he did it at the end. So why didn't he just do that like toward the beginning and stop all of that stuff from happening in that department store? I'm not really too hung up on that because I just really like the Niffler so I want as many scenes with it as possible. Um, Obviously, another one of my favorite scenes was definitely Jacob and that rhinoceros-like creature because that was hilarious. Jacob is so great. Okay, so last question is everything that happened with Credence um, definitely led you to believe that Credence was deceased at the end of the film, but David Yates has made comments about Credence's character and it's kind of implied that he's going to be in future films. So I'm also curious, like, where did his Obscurus go? Or did they just destroy the Obscurus? I don't know. I'm like just confused about that in general and how they would bring him back. I thought that he was a great character and I'm really happy that he will be in it if that is the case. But I also like, I thought that he died and I was confused to hear that he didn't die. So yeah. I think those are all of the questions that I really have. Let me know if you have answers to any of these questions magically, um, or if you've wondered any of the same things, or if you're wondering some other things that maybe I didn't even think of. Um, but these are the things that I've really, that have really like stuck with me f since watching it. The way that I saw Fantastic Beasts, we got to go to this special screening. I got to see it, um, a, I believe it was a week early, at Carnegie Hall in New York City and Eddie Redmayne was there and J.K. Rowling was there and the two of them had a conversation beforehand. They discussed J.K. Rowling's um, charity called Lumos, which is really amazing and I'm going to leave a link to that down below so that you can find out more information about it if you're not aware of it because it sounds like a fantastic charity and it's something that I'm really glad that I was able to donate to when I got Andrew and I's tickets. So that was really interesting. And then they also talked about the film. And then, surprise, at the end of that, uh, David Yates came out and then a ton of the other characters came out. Um, Ezra came out, um, who plays Credence. Uh, Teeny, Tina came out, Queenie came out, and they all just like waved to us and none of them really said anything, but they were just like waving. Uh, but it was just really cool to like be in their presence. We weren't able to go up and meet them or anything afterward, but it was just really cool to like know that they were there. So when we were at the premiere, I tried vlogging. I did some, I have like some footage of us from before like we went in to see the film, 
But as soon as we got inside, they were like, no cameras, no filming, no cell phones, no anything. And I was like, oh no. And I really wanted to just get like a shot or something of them on the stage. But obviously I was seeing Fantastic Beasts early and I was not about to take any kind of chance that could lead me to be kicked out because I was seeing this film. So I'm really, I'm really excited that I got to do it. I'm sorry that I didn't get to vlog it. And that's why I didn't have a Fantastic Beast vlog because it wasn't very eventful after, um, but when I wasn't allowed to film like the most exciting part of seeing it. Let me know what you thought of the film. Let me know if you have any other questions about it or if you have any answers to my questions. And I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye!